Hello, welcome to Toronto Bible Study. I'm your host, Mike Sapat. And today I want to look at this video by Lilies of the Field. Who is this woman? She's a free gracer. She's got her YouTube channel going in. She's preaching the gospel on there. I, I like her stuff for a while. She was like, preaching the gospel and then she goes after people who are like sort of preaching false gospels so it's right up my alley right so i like what she was doing but then she put this other video out now this is the thing like so if you don't know too much about the bible but you know the gospel then you you can preach the gospel you should have preached the gospel we're commanded to so it's very good so when I saw her doing that, I was happy to see that she did that. And, when, and if, she, if she's going to go and correct people's misconceptions about the gospel, that's totally fine as well. Nothing wrong with that. Sorry, I don't know why my green screen is doing this right now, but anyway. It keeps making me disappear, but anyway. So she's she was doing that, so I was like, okay, whatever. That's just totally fine. Keep doing it. Great. Then she made this this song, this uh, video called "Women More More Christian Women Haters," and she started talking about like like how um, I don't know. This guy started. This guy was talking about First Timothy two twelve or and verses like that, and how women shouldn't teach or something. So she got she got on her high horse about that, which is not terrible it's like i can understand why a woman would feel uh strongly about people saying wrong things about it and and he and the person that she's criticizing he was saying wrong things about one Timothy two twelve. but then she went too far into, into saying things that are wrong herself you know she starts saying things because she just thinks she thinks like oh okay well one Timothy two twelve doesn't mean that women can never teach which it doesn't or I don't think it does. Um, but then she she takes the next extreme of, of trying to explain away the verse with like some some weird thing that I don't even know what she's talking about. Some weird like thing from the Greek or something. I don't know. I don't know what she's saying. But anyway, we'll we'll get into it because I I tried to and then then it's anyway. Let me show you what's going on here because it's weird. Uh, okay. Okay, Lilies of the Fields, more Christian women haters. Okay, we don't need, we don't need that. We don't need no Christian women haters, right? Christians are supposed to love women. So, if Christians are hating women, tell them to stop and that's good she was so so as far as uh, so as far as that went in her video that was fine and then she started talking some other stuff you know like she started going into some weird stuff and so then and then look what happened like she like so she so i, I responded with this comment here um sorry I don't know if you can see that anymore, but okay. So I responded with this comment. I don't know if you can read that. I hope so. But um, I responded with this, and then, she, and then she's like responded to me. Right? She replied to me. See how she, she replied to this thing? Then I Then I replied to her. But my reply isn't here anymore, you know? And then I replied, I replied, I typed out this whole long reply and then it's not here anymore. Then I typed it out again. I thought I, thought I did something wrong. And I went back and then it's gone again. So then I come, then I come and I, and I, I typed it on, on um, Microsoft Word. And then I copy and pasted it in like this and then I replied it okay and then we go and then you can see it right so that's fine 
So it's like, okay, you replied to her comment. Then if if you just leave Shalom, the page and come so- back, or you or you just sort of what do you call it? Refresh the page, and it's gone. You see that? So I don't know what that is. Like that's not usually how I've experienced um, shadow banning. So I don't know what that is. Why? Or maybe she set set it up so I can't reply anymore. Or something. I don't know how they do that. I don't know anything about those things because I've never done those things. But in the past, when I've been shadow banned from a from a channel, what happens is my my comment will appear to me, but other people coming won't see my comment. So that's shadow banning. This thing is different. This is just, I can't even reply. And and then when I reply, it looks like it's there. But then if I go back, if I refresh the page, then it's gone. So that's what happens. So, so now, so basically she set it up so I can't rep- respond to her. I, I put a comment, she responded to my comment, and then she made it so I can't respond again. You know? So what am I supposed to do? Now I have to make a video about her. You know, which I never wanted to make a video about her. I don't even care about her, but whatever. Now I'm going to make a video about her because she's teaching, excuse me, teaching this wrong thing. I'm just going to, I'm going to edit that. But she teaches, she's teaching this wrong thing. And, and she's, um, and then she won't even let me reply and have the discussion, you know, because she doesn't like what I'm saying. But what, what she's doing, what she's acting, the way she's acting and, and the way she did that with my comment, that is exactly what this person that she's criticizing, the person like the person who made this why why women shouldn't preach or whatever, that thing, and that she's responding to that. She is just reinforcing what he's saying. She's just literally proving what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let me show you. So well let's listen there for a bit. So the Bible says this is what the guy wrote. And she's responding to it. Shalom. So I came across this post on Instagram and it's just disappointing because it's also from a free gracer and it's just condemning and it does not honor women or at all. And it bothers me and I'm pretty passionate about this. And you know what? I am a child of God, a daughter of God. I believe the gospel and I believe in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go ahead and say whatever I would like to say. Okay. So his post says, this wasn't reference to me, but it was, he was just posting this said, the Bible says women are to learn in silence for a reason. Dot, dot, dot. Women are the weaker vessel. Um, okay. So first of all, when it says women are the weaker vessel uh it means like they're not as strong as men but physically that's what i think it means and that's what in the greek it references strength of the women so um and also it's it, in, in that very greek. verse in the greek in the greek it references the strength of women what what are you talking about man anyway this she likes to act like she knows greek or something like she, all she does is look up things in strongs that's what, that's her knowledge of Greek. Like she looks up things in Strong's Concordance, and she thinks, "Oh, in the Greek it says this. It references the strength of the woman." Now, now, of course, yeah. When Peter says that women are the weaker vessel, he's talking about tell he's telling husbands to treat their wives with honor because they are the weaker vessel, and it's not necessarily about physical weakness. That's not in the in the text. She's just putting that in. Okay. It may be that weaker vessel means more than just physical strength. It may mean also emotional and intellectual strength. We don't know what Peter meant. He doesn't say. It says that they are the weaker vessel and that a husband should honor them. Okay? So she's right up to that point. But where she says something about, oh, it's just physical strength or whatever, well, that's not in the text, and you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't just add that in, okay? Because the fact is... And then this is the thing. So, so this is what, this is what people don't get. And women, I'm sorry, women, feminists, and whatever. If you think that men are physically stronger than you, but in every other thing, men and women are exactly the same, well, you're completely wrong. That's not the case. Okay, men are actually more intelligent. There's a four or five points 
difference in IQ between men and women. I'll put links in the uh, description of this video where you can read more about that. And that might not seem like much, four or five points is not a big deal, right? But what happens is that's average, right? Average, on average, men are about four or five points higher IQ than women. But what happens is, like, IQ is like this, like a bell curve, they call it, the bell curve. So so the low IQ is not very many, then the middle, as you get to the middle range, it's a lot of people. And then as you get to the higher level, then it comes back down, and then it's very, very, very few. That's why it takes this bell shape the curve okay so they call it a bell curve and then what happens is in a bell curve when you have when you have like the two groups are both on a bell curve right but the one group is just a slightly higher so then when you get to this thin part of the of the bell curve at the top here it's almost entirely men it's going to be like as you get down to the very 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 high iq it's almost entirely going to be men and that's what we see in human society. Like, if you look at history, the, all the geniuses of, of arts, philosophy, science, whatever, are men. There's a very, there's a few women geniuses, you know, they, they come up. I'm not saying there's no women geniuses, but it's the vast, vast majority of really, 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 like, genius men, our genius people are men, Okay. And that's just one example of, of how men and women are not the same above the neck, okay? Where, where men are stronger than women, that's physically stronger than women. Yes, that's one thing. But is, there's other things as well. There's the IQ thing. There's probably things to do with emotions and, way, and the way we use logic and stuff like that too. And I'm not saying that means men are better than women. I'm just saying in certain areas, men are clearly going to perform better in terms of thinking and, and other things like that. And maybe in other areas, women are better at thinking. Like maybe like emotional intelligence, if that's a real thing. Maybe women are better at that. I, they, they do seem to be. If, if emotional intelligence is a measurable quantity, then, and that's debatable, but if it is, then it would seem that women uh, I do seem to have more of it than than men, you know, on average again. But anyway, let her continue. It's where it says that women are weaker in First Peter. It also says that men should honor their wife. So, okay, anyways. And then he says, easily manipulated and deceived. They rely on thoughts, feelings, and emotions rather than scripture. This is why they are not to be pastors or teachers. So this, this is just misogynistic and hateful towards women. Let's call it what it is. Why? Why is that mono, uh, misogynistic and hateful towards women? He has an opinion that women are more easily manipulated and deceived. And that this is why they're not to be pastors and teachers. Now, where is he getting that? I suspect he's getting it from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, and, and, and on. And I'll just show you that real quick so we can um, get some context here. 1 Timothy 2, 12. This is the this is of of the of the of the various verses that people bring in to try to say women can't shouldn't shouldn't preach or shouldn't be the the preacher shouldn't be pastors. This is this is the number one uh, verse for that. Okay, so he says, "I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp a man, nor to usurp uh, usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence." For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Okay, so now. What is what is that guy's position based on based on this on this passage? People assume. Okay, and it may be true. I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna get into depth about this passage right now, but what what we're saying is is okay. Paul seems to be saying that women 
he does not suffer a woman to teach. All right. And the way many people have interpreted this is that it's not women, the women can't teach anywhere or anyone or anything. It's that it's that in the congregation, because he's talking to Timothy about like how to run the church. So people assume that what he's saying is that women should not be allowed to teach in the congregation or to be pastors, that is to, in order to usurp authority over the man. That's what they, they kind of think of that as, that's what he means. So, so for a woman, the woman should not teach in the congregation, in the church, like in the like church meetings on Sundays. Maybe maybe if you have a Bible study on Wednesday, you have a woman teach you that, that maybe is okay or whatever. But if you do, if you do this kind of, if you have like, they don't, what 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 the people who who don't like women pastors say is that this this is saying that women should not be pastors or teach in the congregation like preach preach sermons and stuff okay now that whole argument is weak in itself too because the fact is like the idea that Paul that they had like sermons and stuff like that that's not really clear from the New Testament so the way the way we have our churches, right, where everybody comes to sit down, and there's a sermon, and some singing, and then everyone goes home. That that kind of thing. That's not that we don't see that in the New Testament, right? So the idea that Paul is telling us, or the way that we should interpret this to mean that that in our churches today, the way we run them, that women shouldn't be allowed to preach the sermon. Well, that's not clear from this passage. Okay, that's all I'm, I'm saying. I have my own reasons why I don't think women should preach, but that's another that's another discussion, right? I'm not even getting into that. I'm just saying. Or maybe maybe that's relevant here. I don't know. We could talk about that. But but the 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 thing is the guy said how women are easily manipulated and deceived, right? And how they're naive or whatever. And this is what they they're usually talking about this thing because it says because he he says he suffers not a woman to teach, but to be in silence, not nor to use super authority over a man, but to be in silence. And then it's for Adam was first formed, then Eve, right? For. So it's like because. So this, I don't do, I don't suffer the woman to teach or, or whatever. Because Adam was first formed, then Eve. So so there's something about this, this thing that Adam was the first and then Eve. And for, for Paul... This is the reason why he suffers not a woman to teach in order to use super authority over the man, but to be in silence. All right. And then he says this, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So what he's saying by that is that the woman took the, the fruit of the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil first, right? She took it, ate, and then she gave it to her husband and he did eat. That's what it says. So what Paul is saying here, which is not in the Genesis story, but Paul is uh, an inspired author and informing us of this thing, which is that the woman was deceived by the serpent, but that Adam was not deceived. Adam just sinned. He's just wicked, you know? But the woman was deceived. She was like, she was whatever she was deceived okay so then so then people take that they interpret that to mean that women are just more naive more easily manipulated and deceived and that's why paul doesn't want them to be teachers or usurp authority over the man or but to be in silence okay that's that's where that guy is going with that now is he is what he's saying true um that's another discussion i don't i don't know or maybe we'll get into it here i don't really know but let's let it talk listen everyone just to get be pastors or teachers so this this is just misogynistic and hateful towards women let's call it what it is oh you see this listen. one too oh that's another that's another one there in Second Corinthians eleven three, he says, "By by fearless say by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ." So he's kind of using the same idea about Eve to to make this point, 
which is that these false teachers, they, they try to seduce people away from the simplicity of the gospel into these other weird, complicated traditions of men. Okay. And so that's another kind of thing. That's not the best. I don't know. He, I did, this guy used that verse. I would say second Timothy two twelve is the verse you want to use or two twelve and those ones after it. If you want to, if you want to make the argument that women are naive or easily manipulated, I'd say that is the art. That's the verse you should take. But this one is also related. And everyone is easily manipulated. Let's call it what it is. So this, this is just misogynistic and hateful towards women. Let's call it what it is. Anyone who says anything like against feminism, they just say, oh, or anything that if you say, if you have any like sort of position or belief, which, which, which is like contrary to feminist dogma, such as women should be able, women can do anything a man can do and da, 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 like, so anyone who has any, any kind of position contrary to that, if the woman ag disagrees, then it's misogynistic and hateful. If the feminist happens to disagree, then it's misogynistic and hateful. If she agrees, then, then she'll just shut up about it. She won't say it's misogynistic, even if it is. But if they disagree, if they don't want that thing that the guy is saying, then it's, oh, you're misogynistic, you're hateful towards women. Da, 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 da. Like, like, give me a break, man. The guy has a point. He used a Bible verse. He has a claim he's making about women. Okay, he's using a Bible verse to support it. Now, this argument he's making, I'm not saying he's entirely wrong or right. I don't know. Or I'm not even getting into that right now. I have my own opinions about it, but whatever. His argument is very weak. And she and there's many things she could say to point out the weakness of this person's argument, but she doesn't do that. She just says, "Oh, it's misogynistic and hateful towards women." Like this is what this is their the, the, they don't have a real argument. They don't even know how to make and this is and this is this is what I'm saying. Like the way she argues is it's 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 feeding into what this guy is saying. He's saying that women women don't know how to use like don't know how to think properly, and they don't and they're easily manipulated and deceived. So that's why they shouldn't be leaders. She's saying the very fact that he said that is misogynistic and hateful. Where does she get that? She got that from her feminist brainwashing that she's had since she was a little kid, right? And and the fact that she believes that stuff just shows that, at least for in her case, it is true that women are easily manipulated in this deal, at least in her case, because she believes feminism and she doesn't think for herself to say, is this misogynistic and hateful or is this guy just having a point have a point he's making a point and you know i mean he's not saying it in a way he could have said it in a way that was like more diplomatic and less openly offensive but the fact is he never said anything less openly hateful or misogynistic he's just got his opinions about women which are which are these and if these are true, then, then, or whatever, that's his opinion. You know, it's not necessarily hateful or misogyny. He didn't say women are stupid. He just said they're easily manipulated and deceived. They rely on thoughts, feelings, and emotions rather than scripture. There's evidence for all these things. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying there's solid scientific proof that all these things are true about most women or anything, but there's many reasons that we could point to that might support this view, including in the Bible and in the real world. I'm just saying there's like, if she knew how to, how to, how to think, if she knew how to be a leader, right. She could point out the weakness of his argument without just going to their, to their, like their boogeyman of uh, a misogyny. You know what I mean? Like, anyway, listen, everyone is easily manipulated and deceived. If you haven't noticed the most of the earth, is deceived currently and not to mention we have all been deceived and manipula manipulated at some point in our past uh, yeah, yeah everyone has been manipulated and deceived at some point in their past much of the world is deceived by the devil 
most of the world is deceived by the devil okay does those two do those two things equal everyone is easily manipulated and deceived no they don't no they do not uh not just women okay so that's ridiculous him saying they rely on thoughts feelings and emotions rather than scripture is is his own um opinion that's his opinion that's not in the bible so yeah that's his What's opinion that's not in rely on thoughts feelings and emotions rather that's ridiculous him saying they rely on thoughts feelings and emotions rather than scripture is is his own um opinion that's his opinion. yeah that's not in the bible that's not in the bible he's inferring that from what he read in um first timothy 2 to 12 and on but or whatever i don't know where he got it maybe he's talking about this thing second corinthians 11 3 but whatever you can infer that it's not an unreasonable inference from many stories of the Bible, but the Bible clearly doesn't uh, argue that all women are like that or anything. I mean, there's many women in the Bible that show a lot of like shrewdness and, um, and intelligence and wisdom. Okay. Such as the wise woman of Abel Beth Maka. Uh, I, I, I did a sermon on her when I was in school and um, that's from second Samuel chapter 20, I think. And there's other women like that. The wise woman of Tekoa. There's another wise woman. I'm trying to think of some other wise women from the Bible. There's Deborah, you know, JL. Miriam. Although she, she had her issues too. But look how, you know, the, 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 the Bible does show you that, that women can be overly emotional and... and and foolish too and of course men do it too but the bible shows you that some women are wise and some women are, are foolish and some men are wise and some women are foolish the, the bible doesn't really act like all women are like this but it, there it might there might be a case to be made that that women in general shouldn't be leaders it's like like you know, the like the 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 people who think women should be leaders in the church, they usually point to people like Deborah or Miriam. But those are bad examples. Like Miriam is just she just really got in because she was related to those guys, uh, Moses and Aaron. And then when you look at someone like Deborah, it's actually it seems like God put her or whatever. Like she was she was. Her, she had her own amazing character. She was a brave and amazing woman. And God made her, God used her uh, because she's a great servant of the Lord, right? So, and he used her as a prophet and a, and a judge. But some people would say, and if you read this story, it kind of seems like the way the story goes, it's like God was using the woman Deborah and the woman Jael to to kind of shame the people of Israel for the for their ways, you know, You're like the general, the guy uh, Barak he, in that story. This is uh, Judges chapter four, and the guy Barak in the story. He's like, he's like such a coward, you know. He's the le he's the leader of the Israeli army, I, I guess, or whatever Israelite forces and stuff, but. He's kind of like a coward. He wouldn't go, he wouldn't even go to fight the Philistines unless, um, or was it the Philistines or somebody else? I don't know, but I think it was the Philistines. But anyway, he wouldn't let, he wouldn't even go unless Deborah went, you know, it was that kind of thing. And then, and then even when he, when he decided to finally go, Deborah was telling him like, no, 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 you won't get any glory out of this. You're going to come and fight as your job is. And I'm going to go with you just because you're such a, such a punk that you won't go without me. Or I think that was kind of, or maybe she just had to go. Over, I don't know. But but the point is though, she said that like that their enemy Sisera, right, was gonna was gonna fall at the hands of a woman, and it's a way of like shaming Barak to show him like you're 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 a big man, you're a big man, you're a general, you're a fighter, you're a killer, but you can't. You're scared to do your job, and now a woman is gonna get the glory for killing the enemy of Israel. You know. So it's kind of a shame on them, 
you know and the idea that a woman could could be their leader you should read isaiah <clears throat> i think it's isaiah 3 12 isaiah 3 12 i'll put it in the i'll put it in the uh closed captions his opinion that's not in the bible so yeah that's his opinion that he just inserted in there his misogynistic opinion you could say the same thing about men like literally we are the same we're actually the same we have the same uh as we're the same men and women are just the same they're just exactly the same <laughs> like it's so ridiculous like what like how are men and women the same well yeah we're humans we are children of God. But then in every other measurable characteristic, we're different. Like the like everything from the size of our skulls to the to yeah, IQ to like I don't know, whatever, anything, anything, lifespan and all like all kinds of things. Every measurable characteristic is different, men and women, okay? Every single one. As far as our mind you know as far as our literal brain same uh as far as our mind you know as far as our literal brain chemistry we have no no we're not we're not the same even even if you don't believe the iq thing because some people will try to deny that but it's foolish to deny that but whatever let's say some people deny that our brain chemistry is clearly different clearly different very different okay men have more gray matter for instance and women have more connections across the, like, you know how there's like the two lobes of your brain? And so women have more, oh no, sorry, women have more front to back connections, I think, and then men have more side to side. And that makes a difference in, in, in the way you think and stuff. That's why men are like, that's why men are better at math and stuff. It's, this, is, this is all measurable stuff, measurable. But, but of course, because our, our society has been dominated by, feminism for so long right these obvious facts of science and biology are are sort of de-emphasized to the point where or they're just like literally sometimes they're just not even allowed to be spoken you know like the, like the thing i said about iq differences it's it's brave it's the brave researcher who comes out and admits that you know the most people they're not allowed to the reason why the one of the people I'm going to put the link in the thing, but the reason why one of the people put that why she was able to is because she's a woman, you know, and if a man tried to do it, they'd probably get shut down. Have the same stuff going on, same stuff happening. We are all influenced by our surroundings, by our epigenetics, by what we take mm -hmm. in, you know, epigenetics. She knows what epigenetics is. But she thinks that men and women are, are exactly the same in their mind and in their brain. Like, you don't know anything, man. Okay? You don't know what epigenetics is. And you know how to read Strong's Concordance so you think you can teach the Bible. You're, you're just like, you're a wreck. You're a wreck. Obviously, some people have mental health issues and whatnot. But generally speaking, we're all pretty much the same. So... And then he says, this is why they're not to be pastors or teachers, citing this verse that says, But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So that verse is not even like throwing shade at Eve, okay? <laughs> that verse is actually telling people to not be corrupted from the gospel, right? Uh, the gospel is what needs to be preached by everyone that's um do people say that i even say that sometimes like because i'll bring this to to point out how when people when people corrupt the gospel it's always it's often they complicate things when it's very simple just believe in be saved you have eternal life that's the simple thing and they always put all this other stuff oh no well you're gonna have a life change or or if you if you don't sin too much you'll lose your salvation and all that stuff right that's how they complicate the thing. So I bring this in to, to say against those people. But this doesn't say gospel at all. It doesn't say the word gospel there, right? So she introduced that, that gospel thing, you know? Now, why does she do that? Because she's irresponsible in the way she teaches the Bible. Corrupted from the gospel, right? 
the gospel is what needs to be preached by everyone. That's of first importance, of most high importance. Yeah, the gospel must be preached by everyone. Because, uh, and we get, and me and her get into this in the comments, but the gospel is preached, okay? It's declared, it's, 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 um, it's, it's sort of, it's just announced, you know, it's proclaimed, okay? Because it's just, it's just good news. You know, you don't have to teach people good news, you just tell them the good news. You know, I had, I, oh, my, my sister had a baby. So you don't, you don't have to teach them that, right? You just tell them this, this thing, which is good news. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will never die. It's good news. You don't have to teach them this thing. You just, you just tell them that, okay? That's all it is, right? That's why it's different than teaching. And that's why it's different than, you know, that's why women should preach the gospel, but according to Second Tim or First Timothy two twelve, maybe they shouldn't teach, and we don't know the lines of where and when they should be able to teach or not is debatable. So uh, that's another discussion. And it is the Great Commission for everyone. Um, also, like Paul, um, Paul promoted women teaching Phoebe and Priscilla. So. Paul promoted women teaching. That's what she just said. How did he do that? Phoebe. Phoebe, I think Phoebe is the one that brought the letter to the Romans. Is that what she's talking about? I think so. In Romans 16, he, he has some. Uh, he talks about he's, he's like sending greetings and he also talks about certain people who he praises highly many of them are women among them is a woman named phoebe who it appears from what he writes there that she's the one that brought the letter to the romans she she brought the letter there okay how does that say that he promoted women or what did she say paul promoted women um paul promoted women teaching bb and women, women teaching let's see she, she said paul promoted women teaching didn't paul paul said i suffer not a woman to teach that's what he said right but she says said that paul promoted women teaching okay now again like oh okay, let's go let's look at romans 16 just so you don't it's not just me talking at you but did Paul actually promote women teaching? No, I don't think he did that because clearly he said it right there, right? But she's going to explain that away. Of course, that's all they know how to do. They can just explain things away. Okay, I command unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is in Sancria, that you receive her in the Lord as become his saints, and that you assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she has been a succorer of many and of myself also. So, where does it say that, that he's promoting her to be a teacher? Does it say that? No, it doesn't. Nothing like that at all. She was a servant of the church in Sacria. And she was a succorer. That is like she gives them help or, or like somehow gives them support when they need it including Paul. She's a succorer of many, including Paul. And, and, and then he tells them to receive her as become a saint and that assist her in whatever business she has need of you. If he wanted her to teach, why didn't he say assist her in teaching you or, or let her teach you or, or she's going to be teaching you? No, he doesn't say anything like that. So why should we, why would we conclude from this passage about Phoebe that Paul promoted women being teachers. Why? We wouldn't. Okay? Then he says, greet a Priscilla and Aquila. She was saying Priscilla, right? She said that. Phoebe and Priscilla. That's what she said. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Okay? Now, that's all he said there. He just said, greet them. Okay, because they're his friends. All right. And we read about them in the book of Acts, and they were they befriended him. 
And at one point in the story, in the book of Acts, I can't remember exactly where it was. I think it's like chapter like 13 or something. But Priscilla and Aquila are, are in some city. I don't even know where they were. Wow, this is bad. I, I, I don't know. I was losing my brain. But anyway, these two were, were they met up with uh, Barabbas, right? And then Barabbas was, oh no, Apollos. Sorry, it was Apollos. He was, Apollos was teaching some people about Jesus. But he, he didn't really know too much. And so Priscilla and Aquila, and Aquila were there. And then they it says that they he they taught him the like to be more to teach like more perfectly. And so and he accepted their teaching and he went on and became a, a better teacher. But it was the two of them. Priscilla's a woman and Aquila is her is her husband. And he does name the woman here first, but I think in Acts it's it's a woman. It's it's Aquila first and then Priscilla. But anyway, the point is, it was the two of them that were teaching him, not just Priscilla, right? And so there are many people. There are people who take that passage in in um in Acts to say that oh, women can teach, and even I've, I even I kind of do believe that, but. Um, other people will say, no, well, she's with her husband. If, if she's by herself, why, sh why should she be allowed to do that? Yeah. Well, hold on. Let me see if I can find that thing. So, okay. Oh, it's Acts 18. Wow. So let's go there. Let me just show you that real quick, too. Just so you know. Because they're tent makers or something like that. So Paul knew them, you know? Or when Paul met up with them, then and they found out, and then they were working together, you know? So this is where Apollos is here. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Oh, Ephesus, that's where they were. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Oh, you see, he is instructed in the way of the Lord, the Lord God, the Father, because he, he had been part of the baptism of John. And then, look, a Priscilla, when, he, when he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla, see they say Aquila first here. Aquila and Priscilla had heard. They took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him who, when he, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews in that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So you see, he was one of the baptism of John people. He was under the baptism of John. So those people need to need to learn about Jesus, right? Even though they they have a good, they have like they're on the right path, but they they need to know about Jesus. Like later on, here Paul meets up with some guys, and. Uh, and it came to pass when, while Paul was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. But you see, I don't think there's any story about Bar about Apollos being baptized. Eh? And I'm sure he was. But you can see that baptism isn't that important. Aquila and Priscilla don't even baptize them, right? It doesn't even, it's not, that's not the thing. It's about believing. But anyway, so I don't know. I f uh, that was a long talk. I, uh, what was she talking about now? Priscilla. So, oh, yeah. She trying to I say don't know that. what to tell teaching bb and priscilla so i don't know there's another one there's another one in Romans 16 there's another one named junia who he says is was an apostle and so that's another one that the that the egalitarians the people who think women should be allowed to teach they always bring up junia from Romans 16 because she is literally called by paul an apostle so we know that there were some women at least one who who were apostles Right, but even that's okay. She was an apostle. Apostle means she was sent by God, right? But does that mean that she was teaching in the in the congregation and and giving and giving sermons and all this stuff like the, like the way people today, women feminists today, try to say? I don't think so. It doesn't doesn't say that in the text. I don't know what to tell you. And then he went to this for and Priscilla. So. I don't know what to tell you. And then he went to this verse, 1 Timothy 2, 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So that was his conclusion. That's how he wrapped it up. Did that honor women at all? No, that was just throwing hate at women. I don't know. Like I said, I don't think that's hate. You know, the guy, is, maybe he's not, maybe he's a little bit angry or whatever, and he has his opinion, it's certainly not an opinion that feminists appreciate. But I know many women who would agree with pretty much everything he said there. Maybe not the thing about women are easily manipulated and deceived, but maybe they would kind of agree with that too. The thing is, there are many women who certainly are, you know, like, it's like, I don't know. And there, I, I know lots of women that don't want that don't want women leaders in the church. I know I know women like that. Okay, it's not like that's never occurred, and that was certainly the case for most of the history of the church. You know, and most women in the in that period would have agreed. It's only now that that there are large numbers of women who disagree with that idea. Yeah, you know? that didn't. You know, that didn't add in any context to these verses. That didn't explain anything about these verses. Um, what, what, what is she? Is she trying to say that she adds context and explains things? She just said that Paul promotes women teaching. That's what she said. Paul promotes women teaching. And then she goes, Phoebe and Priscilla, as if that's supposed to prove it. That she, t she just says those two names, right? And then, and then that's, that's like proof. So in her mind, right, that Paul promotes women teaching. That's what she said. Because Phoebe and Priscilla, because of that, that's like, duh, obviously, like, that's how, you know how ridiculous that is? And then she's trying to say that this guy doesn't give context. Well, at least he gives a Bible verse, lilies of the field. You don't even give a Bible verse. You're just like, Phoebe and Priscilla, Paul promotes women teaching because Phoebe and Priscilla, like, duh, like, what? So, so, I mean, so hypocritical, first of all, right? Because she's doing, she's worse than him in terms of his, I mean, this, this is pretty weak, what he's doing here too, right? His lack of context and lack of uh, proper explanation is pretty weak, what he, what he did. But she's just as bad or worse, you know? Oh, Phoebe and Priscilla, therefore women should be teachers. What? Are you, are you joking? Um, and so it pissed me off. Let's go to the Greek of... So now she's, now she's, it pissed her off. So now she's, from, from her position of anger, her feelings of anger, that's how she's going to now teach the Bible. Okay? And this is the thing he was saying, that women, remember he was saying this? What does he say? Rely on thoughts, feelings, and emotions rather than scripture. So she doesn't, she, 
it's her it's her belief she prefers the belief that paul promotes women teaching so she so she just says phoebe and priscilla she did not use scripture she just said those two names which appear in the scripture uh, and which paul speaks of okay now paul speaks very highly of those two women those two women are heroes of the faith and and i certainly am not trying to take anything away from either of their uh, magnificent legacies okay all i'm saying is that the fact that paul promoted them as as servants of the lord doesn't mean that he thought that they should be teachers or that women should be, in general should be teachers and she has not used scripture to prove anything she's saying not even one thing has she done she's kind of pointing out some of the weaknesses in his argument like the fact that he doesn't really use scripture very well either and stuff but she hasn't really she's i mean look she's just as bad as him or maybe worse at women that didn't you know that did these verses um 12 shall so it pissed me off let's go to the greek of first timothy 2 12 shall we let's go to the greek she doesn't even read the english she's like oh let's go to the greek that's that way will will defeat his his the plain reading of english which is that paul does not suffer women to teach right that's what it says in english she doesn't like that so let's go to the greek so we can we can uh we can change the bible to the way i like it this is garbage man i mean at least at least try to analyze the english a little bit first before you start trying to get greek stuff you don't even she doesn't know anything about greek she all she knows is how to read strongs that's all she knows how to do she never took a greek class she doesn't know one thing about the grammar or anything nothing okay she knows that if she clicks on this thing she's gonna get some kind of basic definition of the word that's what she knows that's what she knows about greek she knows that her stupid little app right will give her the strong's basic definition of these words strong's is the most basic basic thing there's a lot of detail when you want to analyze the greek there's a lot of detail about these words about the gra like the grammatical form that these words take in the sentence it's lots of analysis if you want to make an argument from the greek but she doesn't care she just wants to support her her view and she'll twist the bible to do it and this is why i'm saying like i say i liked her i liked her okay but then when i saw this this is horrendous this is the type of thing and this is why she's just a newbie she's a new christian you know but people these people think because she's kind of smart or whatever maybe she's got a degree so she, they think like, oh, I'm smart and I'm now a Christian, so I guess I should teach the Bible. You know, this is how they think. They don't think like, oh, maybe, okay, yeah, you're smart and you know, and you're a Christian. Maybe you should study the Bible for a few years and then maybe you should teach it or maybe not. Who knows? Maybe just there's other ministries other than teaching the Bible, okay? And they need smart people too. You don't have to, not everybody who's smart has to teach the Bible. But whatever, man. This is just so dumb, man. What she's doing right here, anyway. Oh, sir. Okay. Let's go there. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I'm typing in here. It's just incompetent, man. Just incompetent, ridiculous okay, nonsense. This is the Greek Strong's Concordance. Tells you what the words mean in Greek. Here's the verse, 1 Timothy 2.12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. What does woman mean? It means woman and specifically a wife. Okay. And no, it doesn't mean wife. No, see what she said? See what she said? So this word, right? Gune. Gune. The, the Greeks didn't have a word for wife. Okay? Even the Hebrews didn't have really a word for that. So they would just say, this is my woman gune or 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 a woman would say this is my man um aner okay they wouldn't say they wouldn't say this is my wife or my husband because they just didn't have that word okay but what she's saying is based on her complete ignorance of greek and looking in strong's concordance she says that 
this that 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 this what he's talking about is specifically a wife. That's what she's trying to say because she doesn't know anything and she thinks she knows or she or I don't even know how how could you possibly think you know? She you think you know how to read a dictionary, so therefore you know what that is. This concordance kind of tells you what the words mean in Greek. Awesome. Here's the verse: One Timothy two twelve. But I suffer not a woman to teach. What does woman mean? It means woman and specifically a wife. Probably from the base of G9 was a woman, specifically a wife. Gune, wife, woman. No, man, no. It's just Gune. It's just woman. Gunaikas or whatever. It's a woman. Okay? Now, it, now, okay, Strong says specifically a wife. Okay? Because, yeah, that's most likely in the Bible, in the New Testament, the the use of that word gune is more commonly used as a wife than as just a woman just generally a woman okay that's probably why strong's has that there again strong's is the most basic thing you would never use anyone who actually wants to analyze the greek they're not using this man this is just this is just the, for the most basic thing just to check like if you already know greek but then like you know like like say my vocabulary is not that good right so i have to go and check these things when i'm reading the bible if i want to check the greek right so that's what this is for it's not for any kind of real interpretation or exegesis of the bible that's not what this this concordance thing is for Okay, but people who who don't know anything about the Bible, they think that this is how people analyze the Greek. That all they do is they just check Strong's and then, oh look, there's a definition. Oh, okay, now we know, and then now we can analyze. No, that's not how you do it at all. But anyway, yeah, Gune, Gune, it means woman, and then it means wife because they don't have a word for wife. That's what it is. All right, and there means man. But it means husband also because they don't have a word for husband. So they would just say, that's my aner. That's my gune. That means that's my wife. That's my woman. Okay, I never hear anyone talk about this, but it, it's, it's out there. I found it on the internet. Somebody pointed this out to me. And man means man and also... Oh, I found it on the internet. Somebody pointed out to me. So I don't know how anybody doesn't know this. So that's why. That's how... So all the all the thousands of scholars that have studied this passage over the over the centuries, right? The tens of thousands, people debate this thing. Like, she doesn't know anything about anything, anything that these people said, nothing. But somebody on the internet told her that this thing, Aner and uh, Gune mean wife and husband. So therefore, she thinks she found the master key to interpreting 1 Timothy 2.12. And now she's, she's like the expert and everyone else is stupid. What kind of, I can't even believe anybody could be this dumb, but then I'm telling you, this is what happens. When you teach the Bible, the Bible is not like other books. When you teach the Bible, it goes straight to your head. It's very dangerous. You have to be very careful that you don't let this thing go to your head. Because now she thinks she's some expert, you know? And it's the same thing that happened to those guys destroying the works of the devil and truth spell. They're just idiots now. They think because once, because people will come to you, because when you teach the Bible, people come to you and they go, oh, thank you so much. Oh, you really blessed me with your words, with your teaching. And that's how people are. And so when you get that from people, you start to, it goes in your head, man. You have to be very, very careful. That's why James says, uh be not many masters okay and and the masters receive a greater condemnation so you thinking lilies of the field if you watch this video you thinking that you know what you're talking about and just going and teaching this like you know when you don't know anything you're like ah uh, i can't believe like you're, you should be ashamed of yourself man this is terrible this is horrifically bad fellow husband okay so this verse in particular is talking about a wife and her husband so it's saying you know the woman should learn so because of that because that thing says gune and aner right she's saying that this particular verse which which almost which like look man nobody everybody translates this as woman and man nobody translated it as husband and wife there's other parts in the new testament where the same word gune will be translated as wife and the same word aner will be translated a husband okay but right here almost nobody does it 
We'll look on Bible Hub or whatever. Or let's look on Bible Hub right now. Excuse me. I do not permit permit a woman to teach or assume authority over a man. Women. Men. Woman. Man. Woman. Man. Woman. Man. Even the Berean literal Bible. This is the, like, they try to do literal translation. Woman. Man. King James, obviously, woman, man. New King James, woman, man. New American Standard, woman, man. 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 The Aramaic English, woman, man. Contemporary. They should be silent and not be allowed to teach or to tell men what to do. I guess because the previous verse is talking about how women should be, I don't know, something else about women. But they, they don't even put the word woman there. You know, these, these guys, well, this is terrible Bible anyway, but woman, man, woman, man, woman, man. I did not allow them to teach or have authority over men. That's, uh, again, it's not talking. They, I did not allow them to teach or have authority over men. You think that says wives? Woman, husband. Ah, so the finally we have one that says husband, but it still says woman here, not wife. I did not allow a woman to teach. And again, remember the context, right? Paul is writing Timothy about how to run the church. I do not allow a woman to teach nor to rule a husband. So even this one where it finally has the word husband, right? Even this one, it would be a stretch to say that this that this verse is about uh, husband-wife relations, okay? Which is what she's trying to say. I do not permit a woman to teach or, ex or exercise authority over a man. Woman, 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 man. There's more translations. You want to check them? Woman, man, woman, man. Look, man, it's nobody, almost nobody has even the one that said husband, one. And even that one, like I say, it would be a stretch to, to try to say just that because he said husband, that that verse is all about husband and wife relations. It's not, clearly not, clearly not. Okay. Okay. So this verse on the internet, somebody pointed this out to me and man, means man and also fellow husband, okay? So this verse in particular is talking about a wife and her husband. So it's saying, you know, the woman should learn under, or the wife should learn under her husband because the, the marriage between a husband and a wife is a picture of Christ, right? The, the man is a picture of- So now she's going into what Paul wrote in Ephesians 5, which is another book written to another church regarding other issues. These letters are like occasional, right? They're, he writes them for a specific purpose. And in this one, he's writing to Timothy about how to run a church. The Ephesians, they, that letter, I mean, there's a few reasons why he wrote that, but that was for them about that thing for them. Okay, and he's talking to them about husbands and wives in chapter 5, and so he says that, the husband and wife relationship is like Christ in the church. Even there, it's saying the man has authority over the wife. Here, again, he's talking to Timothy about how to run a church. Okay? Because Timothy's running the church there. I think that, I think, actually, that is in Ephesus. So it's very, actually, you know, so she might have some leg to stand on with the fact that the letter to the Ephesians had that thing about women and, and thing, but then still, it doesn't matter. This is not about that, man. He's telling him how to run a church, and he's saying, I don't let women teach. Okay? So that's the context. Now, again, I'm not going to get into the whole argument of why 
this verse is saying that women shouldn't preach and teach and stuff. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just saying her argument is absurd. It's ludicrous what she's saying, okay? First, she has to change the translation that almost no, none of the experts of translation have chosen to use what she's saying. So she's just, out of her zero knowledge of Greek, she's going to translate, she's going to retranslate this passage. Okay, she doesn't know one thing about Greek, but she's going to retranslate this passage. And then based on her ridiculous translation, she's going to reinterpret the passage. And this is very, very irresponsible and wicked. Okay, I mean, this is not some other book. It's not you're not teaching Shakespeare. You're teaching the Bible. Okay, lilies of the field. Of Christ. So it's all symbolic, like God loves to use pictures and symbols to explain how things are. But Paul is a picture of Christ, right? The, the man is a picture of Christ. So it's all symbolic, like God loves to use pictures and symbols to explain how. It's all symbolic. It's all symbolic. God loves to use pictures and symbols. So so the fact that he, at one at one time, not God, but Paul happened to use this metaphor about Christ in the church and the woman and the man in the marriage in another letter. Because of that, that like a letter that was written years before this, right? But because of that, she's saying, oh, God loves to use me metaphors and images and stuff. So that's what 1 Timothy 2.12 is about. She doesn't show you any of the context of 1 Timothy 2.12 or the book of Timothy, 1st Timothy, or anything. And then she's trying to say that that guy doesn't use context. That the guy that she's criticizing in this video, that he didn't use context, he doesn't, he doesn't edify the, the listener. No, you're the way, you're just confusing, man. You're, you're confused yourself, lilies of the field, and you're confusing your... Okay? I don't know where you got the idea that based on your, your, your reading of Strong's Concordance, that you know how to translate the Bible. And even based on your on your weak translation, where's your use of context? Why aren't you contextualizing this in the passage, in the book that it's written in? You're not. You're just saying this, you're taking this other thing, you don't even know where it is. The story in, 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 in Ephesians chapter 5, you're taking that thing and you're going, well, God loves to use metaphors. And then you're saying that this is about that same thing. Well, you're just ridiculous, woman, okay? And you're, you're feeding into what this guy's saying because you, you're doing everything he said that women do. I'm not saying all women are like that. I'm not, okay? I don't agree with his argument as to why women shouldn't teach. I have my own argument as to why women shouldn't teach and preach in the, in the congregation. But... Um, I have my own. I don't agree with him, but you're actually literally doing everything he says women do. Okay? You're doing it. And I'm not saying that because you're doing it that that proves that women are like that. But you're literally doing exactly what he said. Exactly. Like even when he said, oh, the women rely on feelings, and then you got pissed off, and then you decided to just make a video and then teach people a bunch of nonsense. This is terrible, okay? Like, I don't know, I don't know why people think that, oh, well, I'm a Christian, so I better go teach everybody. You don't know anything. Why don't you go to, why don't you go to church or go, or go to a seminary or whatever? Study, study, okay? Study, then you can go and teach, okay? You didn't do the first part yet, but you think you can already go and do the second part. Things are, but... It is specifically talking about um, well, the, the man is a picture of Christ. So it's all symbolic. Like God loves to use pictures and symbols to explain how things are. But it is specifically talking about um, a husband and a wife here and this church in this church. It's not specifically talking about a husband and wife. Okay. You just want it to be about that so that you can have your, your belief. It's not saying that. No translators are doing that. One translator said husband, and even that, again, he, he, because he's trying to say that translation, they're trying to say that he suffers not a woman to teach, nor to use super authority over 
a husband that's like they they think that 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 second part of the verse is about husbands and wives but they're 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 actually leaving the first part i suffer not a woman to teach that they're still leaving that as a woman i suffer not a woman to teach okay because they're leaving that to be about again the church women are not allowed to teach the church. that's the way that translation put it and you have to come up with your own translation even though you don't know anything about greek or anything right and now you're going to you're going to so you're going to make up your own translation and then you're going to just make up your own interpretation of your translation because even your even if you were even if this is i suffer not a wife to teach nor to use super authority over the husband but to be in silence let's say that's what it is right I guess if that's what it was, if that's actually what this translation is, then I guess you have a point. I guess. I guess. It was, they were trying to put but, people back. But the fact is, you don't know anything about Greek or anything. So the idea that you're, 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 we should take your translation seriously is absurd. And the fact you think that you, oh, oh we just, we just look in the Greek. We just look in the strongest concordance. Oh, look, it says wife. Oh, look, so that's that's wife. That's what that is. And that's, oh, look, oh, Anair means what husband. Oh, so that's what that is, it's husband. Like, give me a break. Like, I can't believe anybody is this ignorant and naive. I can't believe it. I just, like, but like I say, man, it's when the people teach the Bible, it goes to your head. They think, now they think that, they, that they're experts because there's all these other people that are just completely ignorant, right? She's kind of smart or whatever, kind of, you know? And so some people are like, they're just, they're not that smart and they don't know anything about the Bible. So then they hear her, they think she's smart. Now they start listening to her and, they, and they're treating her like she's, oh, thanks so much. Oh, I'm so glad your, your videos. And then it goes into their head that they think that they are smart, that they are experts. Because all these people are treating them like experts. But they are not experts. They're nothing. They know nothing. She knows nothing. And on top of that, she's not that smart. Because you actually, like, just listening to the way you reason about these things, it shows that you're just not, like, you're not as smart as you think you are, and, you, and you're much more ignorant than you think you are, okay? ...symbols to explain how things are is a picture of Christ, right? The, the man is a picture of Christ. So it's all symbolic. Like, God loves to use pictures and symbols to explain how things are. But it is specifically talking about... Um, a husband and a wife here and this church in this church it was they were trying to put people back under law they were all under false teachers so paul was trying to they were trying to put people back under law they were all under false teachers now of course yes there is there is a lot of discussion of false teachers in in first and second timothy right but then she goes something about they're they're trying to people put people back under law I don't think that's a major thing in this in this letter, but okay. And she says that. And what does that have to do with the with the man and woman thing? Let's but see. it is specifically talking about um, a husband and a wife here, and this church in this church. It was they were trying to put people back under law. They were all under false teachers. So Paul was trying to put it back in order. And there's a lot of different ways. That's true. Paul was trying to put it back in order. Under law, they were all under false teachers. So Paul was trying to put it back in order, and. There's a lot of different ways that he did that. And he was telling them, you know, the, the correct order in a marriage so that it could resemble Christ and Christ. So, so what is that? Okay, so Paul was trying to put it back in order in the church because of false teachers. That's what she was saying, right? He's trying to put it back in order because there's false teachers there trying to put people back under the law and stuff. And then how does that tie into uh, Paul's now talking about husbands and wives? What, what are you talking about? How does that tie in? I mean, I, mean, I guess if you, if you accept her assumption that this particular verse is about husbands and wives, you accept that assumption and you accept her other assumptions about what Paul's talking about, false teachers and a back under the law thing and try to sort it out or whatever. If you accept all of her assumptions, uh, everything she's giving you, which she has not even shown you one reference, one verse, 
nothing. She's just telling you. She's telling you this stuff. There's false teachers. Paul's, they're trying to get people back under the law. Paul's trying to sort it out. She didn't give you one verse or one like reference to a book you could read or nothing. Not one. Not one. She's just telling you this stuff. Right? But if you believe everything she says, as if it is, as if what she says literally is the gospel, if you believe it all, would would this add up? Would her argument make sense? Not really, still, because it still doesn't tie into this woman wife husband business, you know? Why would why would he like he he's trying to get rid of these people that are teaching false in the church and suddenly he starts telling them about wife and husband? Why? What does that have to do with anything? Position as the head, you know, of the church. But anyways, resemble Christ and Christ's position as the head, you know, of the church. But anyways, Anyways, so lastly, I would like to go to Genesis 3.26. So, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as... Genesis 3.26, she says. But there's Galatians 3.26, obviously, right? So, I guess I'll just let her out because she, she just misspoke. But that's how she's just like, again, they get all emotional and they don't know. I'm not talking about all women. I'm talking about her and people like this. So... For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if I'm reading this right, it says there is no male or female. See, look, man. This is why when you read the Bible, when you, when you look at passages in the Bible, you have to look at the context. You don't just take it out. Oh, look, it says... There's no ma male or female, so that means women can teach. And, and anyone who says any different, well, you're just discriminating against ma ma uh, women because pa Paul said there's no male or female. Well, whatever Paul is saying here, whatever he's saying to the Galatian church in chapter 3 of his letter to them, whatever he's saying to them, when he says this, there is neither male nor female, whatever that is, he's certainly not saying that there is no difference between men and women or that all their roles in the church and everything are exactly the same. That's certainly not what that means, okay, or what he's talking about here, okay? Mostly he's talking about how we shouldn't put divisions between us as Christians based on these things, which are real differences. They're... The Jew and Greek, they are really different in the world, but in the church, we should not hold those to be different. Bond and free. So there's a man who's a free man and there's a man who's a slave. Those are clearly very different fig, uh, categories of human being in the world of the, of the New Testament that Paul is writing to. Clearly very, very different, right, in the world. And he's just saying in the church, we shouldn't have those differences. And then male or female? Yeah, in the church, we shouldn't have them. Okay? Does that mean that, oh, we should just let women be teachers and male and men should, men should be, or whatever? There's no difference in roles between men and women in the church whatsoever. Is that what he's talking about? You know, maybe we should go to Galatians 3 real quick. I was just reading this not too long ago, but she's just talking about how, like, the people there in Galatia, in Galatia, right? They had been convinced by some false teachers that they should follow the law of Moses uh, and in order to like live the Christian life. And he's saying, no, the law was just a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we may be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under, so, so we're no longer under the law. That's what he's saying. For ye are all children in Christ Jesus, but uh, children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So, because you baptized in Christ, you've been put you put on Christ. 
So then that's why he starts, there's neither Jew nor Greek, because that's the that's the difference that he was talking about first, because the people in Galatia, they had they had started following the law. So because so it's like kind of like maybe they think they're inferior to Jews or something, or they have to kind of be more Jewish to 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 be saved because Jesus was a Jew or whatever. Whatever they thought, right? He makes that the first in this in this list of things that that there is neither this or that anymore in the church. He puts that first because that was the subject of what he was talking about. And then he says, neither bond nor free, neither male or female. These two, these, these two, the bond nor free, male or female, those are incidental to his argument. He's just saying that really he's saying that there's neither Jew nor Greek, so that they can understand that they don't have to follow the law anymore. Right? But then he wants this, he he has these things in too, just because. It's the same kind of kind of thing that these kind of differences exist in people's minds that shouldn't. And so he's just trying to get rid of all of it. But that doesn't mean that there's no difference in roles between men and women or anything. Because he clearly does I mean, it seems pretty clear from what he's saying in first in First Timothy two twelve and other places like that. First Corinthians seven, he talks about women, and so there's there's differences in the commands that Paul gives to women and men. Okay, so the mere fact that he says there's neither male nor female here in Galatians does not does not imply that there's no difference in roles between men and women in the church. And so, if we have different roles between men and women in the church, as we clearly do from Paul's other writings, such as as she was bringing up Ephesians five, if we if we understand that there's differences in roles in men and women, then it's certainly possible that that Paul doesn't want women to be preachers and only men should be preachers. I don't. Again, I'm not trying to make that case here. I'm just pointing out what's wrong with what she's saying. And how she did, she did, she's an irresponsible Bible teacher, and nobody should listen to her. Female in Christ Jesus, which means females can teach as much as they would like, as much as they. Oh, oh, that's what that means. That's what that means. That's what that means. Because it says no male or female. She just takes that one little few verses, because it it by itself it seems like it supports what she's saying. When actually, again, like I just showed you in the passage, it does, that's not even what he's talking about. It's got nothing to do with it. It's not talking about letting women do whatever men do. It's not saying that at all. Okay, there's nothing to do with that, and he's not saying that there's no differences between them or there's no differences in roles between them. He's not suggesting anything like that whatsoever. Okay, lilies of the field. What they marry. Joke. If you believe the God. What a, what a complete joke this person is. What a complete and utter joke. The fact that these people think they can teach the Bible. She's worse than, than, than destroying the works. That, well, she's not worse than those two claffies, but she's pretty bad. This is bad. But this is what feminism does to people, man. According to the promise. So if I'm reading this right, it says there is no male or female in Christ Jesus. Yeah, you're not reading that right. You're not reading that right. It says that, yeah, it said that you read that part right. There's no male or female in Christ Jesus. Whatever the, 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 the interpretation you get from that is just completely absurd. It's just entirely based on your bias, your particular ideology. That's what you're reading in this. That's not, You're not reading what the Bible says. You're reading your ideology into the bible okay which means females can teach as much as they would like as much as they marry if you believe the gospel and you are a woman god bless you teach the gospel please we need people teaching again don't teach the gospel preach it proclaim it declare it don't teach it it's not to be taught and when you want to teach the bible well i i don't know i guess women think that they can teach the Bible. whatever man i'm not going to get into that like i said but at least study so that you know. Like he says in 1 Timothy, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. You need to be ashamed, lilies of the field, for what you said in this video and your disgusting uh, censorship of my comments. You're an incompetent fool, okay? The fact that you think you can teach this book 
this book, the word of God, with your nonsense, with your ignorance. Anyway. The true gospel. And Jesus lifted up women, okay? And Jesus is in my spirit. And oh, Jesus lifted up women, okay? So therefore, I can teach the Bible, even though I don't know one thing. Even though I, I don't know Greek, one thing of Greek. But I'm going to just retranslate the Bible to suit my ideology and then teach people that. Like there's some, there's a bunch of naive people who think that she's a good Bible teacher, right? Who are going to believe this foolish woman. Anyway, whatever. Cool. And Jesus lifted up women, okay? And Jesus is in my spirit. And Jesus is okay with me saying this. I'm serious. I'm not even... Oh, Jesus is okay with me saying this because I'm serious. Because Jesus... Because I, I get to say whatever I want and Jesus supports it because I, I'm saved. That's what she thinks. She thinks, oh, I'm saved. The Holy Spirit's in me. So now whatever I say is a holy... And 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 if I teach the Bible, it's it's by it's through God's guidance. That's the same thing that 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 idiot uh, de destroying the works of the devil talks like. He thinks he thinks God is literally make like like influencing his beliefs and his thoughts so that everything he says about the Bible and stuff is from God. That's what he thinks, and that's basically what she's saying here. Jesus is in my heart, so Jesus supports what I'm saying right now. How do you know Jesus supports? How could you possibly know what Jesus Christ supports about what you're saying right now, lilies of the field? But this, again, this is what happens. When you think you can teach the Bible, this is the kind of mentality that people get. They think that they're speaking, they think they're literally speaking God's word. God wants them to do this. God wanted her to, to make this stupid video, even though she's pissed off. She admitted, right? She was pissed off and she made the video. So out of her, her sinful anger, she made the video. But she thinks Jesus is supporting in what she's saying. Can you believe the nerve of this person? So I can't even imagine saying something like that. Jesus supports what I'm saying. That's what she said. Jesus supports what I'm saying, guys. Lifted up women, okay? And Jesus is in my spirit. And Jesus is okay with me saying this. I'm serious. I'm not even joking. Like, we need to lift up women because Jesus lifted up women. We need to lift up women. Agreed. Jesus lifted up women? Agreed. Does that mean that women should teach in the, in the, in the, in the congregation? No, it doesn't. Does that mean that your ridiculous interpretation of these Bible verses is correct? No, it doesn't. And it certainly does not mean that Jesus supports what you're saying or whatever you said. Jesus is okay with what I'm saying here. And shut up, idiots. How could you? What? It's, it's, what? You know how disrespectful that is? It's disrespectful to Jesus. You don't know. You don't get to say that. You don't get to say Jesus is okay with me saying this. You don't get to say that. None of us get to say that. You don't know how to read his mind. You don't you don't you don't know him like that, okay? None of us do. He's your king. He's not your buddy. He doesn't support your your lifestyle choices or your ideologies, okay? He is your king. He has the book. Okay? You don't get to just read this book and put your ideology into this book. That's his book. That's his word, okay? So we read this word and we read it very very carefully to very carefully understand it so that when we teach it to people that they don't get confused and learn the wrong thing, okay? What we don't do is, is just, Jesus is okay with my beliefs because I'm a Christian. That's not how this works, all right? A woman, when he, he would talk to women when he wasn't supposed to, he'd heal them and he was shocking everyone because it was so culturally inappropriate at that time. Wow, wow, wow. He talked to women when he was, we talked to the woman at the well and he was walking around with women serving him in his ministry. So therefore, she could teach the Bible. How come Jesus never had one woman teaching in his whole ministry? Did you ever see one in the whole New Testament? Did you ever see one? And uh, he has 12 disciples, right? 12 of the disciples are like very close to him. And then there's all these other disciples all over the place. How many of them are women? I don't know. Maybe there were women among the others. But all the 12, 
there was not even one woman, not even one. And then when he sent those 72, I bet you they were all men too. They don't, we don't read about any women in those 72 that he sent out. Now we read later on in the New Testament, we read about some women who were doing stuff. And yeah, there were women following around. They were ministering to them, which sounds like they were like serving food and stuff like, like, like the typical thing that feminists hate women to do, but that women have been doing throughout human history. That's what it seems like they were doing, okay? They were ministering unto them, which is, means service, serving them, okay? They weren't teaching. Uh, you don't see any women teaching in the New Testament, not even one. That thing with Aquila, that's the only thing with the Priscilla and Aquila. And again, it's like there's two. It's a husband and wife there. You don't see a woman teaching by herself in that book. I guess Anna the prophetess, maybe. Anyway, but she wasn't even teaching it. She's a prophet. She, she, there's no teaching, okay? There's no women teaching in this book, in this New Testament. Um, so Jesus is going to continue to lift up, and he was shocking. The only thing is like Priscilla and Aquila. That's it. But like I say, Aquila was there too. So the husband is there. Everyone's, it was so culturally inappropriate at that time. So Jesus is going to continue to lift up women. And yeah, if you believe the gospel, you are free in Christ. And you are not, you know, distinguished one from the other. It's all, it's all. No, whatever that is, again, whatever that is, there's neither male nor female. It doesn't mean that they're not distinguished one from the other. They certainly do distinguish between men and women in the Bible, in Paul's writings, and in the mind of Jesus Christ. Clearly, clearly. Okay, he doesn't just think they're all the same. And again, like I say, man, none of the 12 were women, not even one. Okay, there's no book in the Bible written by a woman, not even one. Why? Why? And, and all throughout the church history, women have never been the leaders of churches or, or preachers or anything like that. All throughout church history. You get the you get these few marginal outliers who are mostly not even orthodox. They're like mystics and stuff, Joan of Arc and people like that. And then you get and then you get like modern feminist Christian women, so called. That's all. That's it. Otherwise, there's no women leaders in the church. None. None. Okay. So you're just you're just like a foolish and silly person who you're making women look bad with your ignorance and your and your emotionalism you're you're doing exactly what the guy was saying women do i'm not saying i'm not saying women all do that but you're doing it so you're basically reinforcing his point okay and you're honestly worse than him like he he has a better argument and a better even his argument is very weak and very you uses scripture very poorly even though that's true about what he what he did you're worse you're more confusing you're using verses more irresponsibly more out of context and you're more ideological and stuff than him you're worse than than the guy you're 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 criticizing okay it's all uh, we're all heirs we all have the same holy spirit right like we literally have all the same holy spirit and we all have the same holy spirit so therefore we can all teach is that what you're trying to say everyone can just teach because we all have the holy spirit man just man, you're just like a foolish fool man what, what does paul say it's like some teachers some apostles some pastors some preachers right there's different gifts, man. People have different gifts, okay? Some people have the gift of being a teacher. Some people do not. You don't seem to, okay? Or maybe you do. Maybe you're good at teaching, but you're bad at, or at least you just don't have the knowledge and you have not put in the work of understanding the Bible well enough to actually teach it. So while you may have skills that the the act of teaching like you're skilled at speaking and analyzing text or whatever i guess or you're, you're kind of smart so yeah yeah maybe you have a you have a talent for teaching maybe 
But then to teach the Bible, that's that's two other steps you have to take. First, you have to learn the Bible, which you haven't done. Then you have to establish that it's okay for women to teach the Bible, which you have not done here. That's clearly, you have not done that here. And, and if you want to try to do that, well, I mean, uh, there's plenty of women who would support you in that these days, but... If you want to honestly, from an honest intellectual standpoint, prove that the Bible allows women to be teachers of, of the of the Bible, well, you got to up you got to uphill climb for that. Okay, again, if you want to if you want to act like this, the way you're acting here, like whatever you believe is the gospel truth, then yeah, there's plenty of people who will support you. They think the same way, but if you want to actually with intellectual integrity, study the Bible and prove your case for women teachers from the Bible, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have a tough time with it because that's not really in the Bible. Okay. No one actually has to teach us. No one. We just fellowship with one, right? Like we literally have all the same Holy Spirit and no one actually has to teach us. No one. We just fellowship with one another and we teach those who don't no one has to teach us. We just fellowship with one another and we just because we all have the Holy Spirit. Because that's just because John says, like, we you have the unction of the only holy one. And 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 you know all things and, and you don't need to teach. You don't need anyone to teach you. That's what Paul that's what John's saying. John's talking about how they had these heretics in their group. There's some kind of schism in the in, in John's church there. I think that was in Ephesus too. And so He's talking about them, they, that the people that he's writing to, that church as a group, the church that he's writing to, they don't need, they don't need to be taught by anyone like those false teachers. That whole group, okay? He's not saying that individual people in that group don't need to be taught anything. Of course they do. That's why there's obviously there's some people are teachers and pastors and other people are learners. And Paul has lots of instructions to us about who should teach and how they should teach and what they should know and who who they are and their kind of life manners and stuff. There's lots of stuff like that. All right. So the fact that you're even saying this, it just shows how ignorant you are, how you should not teach the Bible at all. Like, it's so, this is so bad. I don't know if you should just delete this channel or, or just delete this video or delete your whole channel. I don't know. But, like, this is so bad what you did here. This is so bad. This video that I, I think is a good chance you should just delete your channel and stop doing this. And just go study the Bible by yourself. Don't try to teach anybody. Just study it by yourself and figure things out. Okay. And I don't know if you should ever teach the Bible. I don't know. But at the very least, you should take this video down. At the very, very least, you should immediately take this video down. If you are a responsible person who loves God and loves Jesus Christ and, and cares about the Bible, cares about Christian truth, you should take this video down. This is an embarrassment. I mean, the fact like you're so shameless that you think this is good. Like this is that's how like I mean you're so shameless you're just gonna leave this up. That's how shameless you are. That's how ignorant and weak you are as a Bible teacher. But you should take this down. And you should probably, you should honestly, you should probably, probably delete your whole channel because it's just going to mess you. It's just going to make you think you can teach other things and you're going to teach other wrong things. I haven't watched all your videos. You probably taught a bunch of other wrong things too. So if I were you, I would delete your whole channel, you know, and just, just get out of this. You're not a teacher. You're not a Bible teacher. Not yet anyway. Maybe one day. I don't know. But not yet. Not right now, you're just an ignoramus who's teaching it wrong. Okay? And there's there's a destruction for you. Second Peter 3, 15 to 16. Again, those people are saved in Second Peter 3, 15 to 16. As I told you in my comments here. The people that he says, Second Peter 3, 15 to 16, the unlearned and unstable who rest the scriptures to their own destruction, they're saved. They're not, they're not unsaved devils. They're saved people who, who rest the scriptures and it will be to their destruction. Doesn't mean they're going to hell. They're not, they're saved. 
but they it, they can still be destroyed and they will be and you will be too if you continue on this path who are not saved okay and also i don't even like we the holy spirit right like we literally have all the same holy spirit and no one actually has no we we all we literally all have the same holy, like, like this kind of thing like imagine you th imagine thinking that this kind of bubble headed talk right like this kind of talk like you know when women do this thing like they talk like this like hey we're, we're all the same right nah, 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 nah. like she actually thinks this is a reasonable way to discuss the Bible and teach it. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine this? And then, and then, you know, when women get together and they and they start clucking and they're like doing this, they're talking like this, and the other women are like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then and that's how they they pump each other up. And if she was in a crew of 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 feminist like brainwashed women like her, then they would all they would all just support each other, and and then they then they would leave that group thinking, you see. All reasonable people agree with me because these four other feminists brainwashed, they agree with me. So then all reasonable people agree with me. And anyone who disagrees with me, they're unreasonable. They're probably misogynist women haters. That's how they think. That's how these people think. Anyway. Yes, yeah, so to teach us, no one. We just fellowship with one another and we teach those who don't, who are not saved. Okay. And also, I don't even like feel like I, I'm not even, I don't even want to teach. I'm just sharing. But if I did want to teach, I could, and I would. No, you're teaching. You're teaching. You're not just sharing, okay? You're literally teaching. You're telling people, you're taking the words of the Bible, and you're telling them, the, the, you're telling them, like, this is what they really mean. This is what this means. And you're actually changing the words. Like, when First Timothy 2, 12, you literally changed the words of the Bible, and then you told them what it means. So, yes, you're teaching, okay, because you think you're a teacher. Regardless of what you tell yourself, you might say, oh, I'm not teaching, I'm just sharing. But no, you're a teacher, and you're acting like a teacher, you're thinking like, and you're doing things with, that are teaching. But you're teaching wrong, and you don't know anything, and you're just an ignorant fool, okay? This is, this is really, it's just like pathetic, man. It's just pathetic and weak. What you did here. It's so weak, so dumb, so hypocritical, man. You're just like the guy, you, like I said, everything that guy accused women in general of, you have done here. I'm not saying all women are like that, but you certainly are. You are exactly what that guy said all women are. You're doing exactly what he said. So that's about it. All right. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Um, so that's dumb, man. That was just dumb and sad. It's just terrible. It's, it's worse than dumb and sad, of course. It's actually just irresponsible and wicked. Okay, this is what I wrote. 1 Timothy 2.12 is not about wives and husbands. It's about how women should not teach in the congregation or be pastors. I'm not saying women should never talk or teach, but the way you use the Greek here is very irresponsible and is really reinforcing what the man said that you are criticizing in this video. You got emotional over his comment and started making a video, and you abandoned logic and proper exegesis to make your feminist points. I like your videos, but you really should think about why you decided to start teaching the Bible when you barely know how to read it. You don't read Greek, but you think you can use the Greek because you know how to use Strong's. Have you read 2 Peter 3, 15-16? Don't be one of those unlearned and unstable people who rest the scriptures to their own destruction. The people Peter was talking about were saved, but they taught false doctrines and court destruction in this life and loss of reward in the next. There is no male or female in Christ Jesus. That's Galatians 3.26 that she brought up. That is a spiritual reality that has yet, or it's 3.28 I think. That is a spiritual reality that has not yet come to fulfillment in the world. In this world, we are still men and women, and we are different. Actually, maybe that, that part of my comment is not that strong, but that's kind of dumb. I shouldn't have wrote that, but whatever. It kind of, it's okay. We don't teach the gospel. We preach it, declare it, this is what I was saying. And proclaim it. Teaching is something else. Can women teach? I think it's permissible for women to teach in other settings than preaching in the congregation, but not everyone agrees. If you want to convince people that women should be allowed to teach, this video is the wrong way to go about it. So then she writes this. 
Look at what she wrote. Why couldn't it be about wives and husbands? Why? Like, you don't know anything, man. You don't, like, you, so why is it about wives and husbands? You don't know why it couldn't be. If you don't know why it couldn't be, then you don't know why it is. You don't, just don't know. You just like it to be about wives and husbands because that way your your thing makes kind of makes more sense, I guess, or whatever. Within the church, the wife learning from her husband about what was taught. Um, what does he say? Suffer not a woman to teach in order to use, usurp authority over the man. Why why would it so then it's about it's about how the wife should learn from her husband? No, it doesn't even say that. That's an, there's another verse that says that. That's not it. In, yeah, and then she was in the verse after it refers to Adam and Eve, who were the first wife and husband. Yeah, well, they were also the first man and woman, as I said in my comment to her back. So the like, so okay, whether whether it's about wife and husband or man and woman, the Adam and Eve thing doesn't help either case. Okay, even though, like, let's say there's those are the two options. It, it's either one Timothy two twelve is about wife and husband relations. Or it's about men and women in general. Adam and Eve were the first wife and husband. They're also the first man and woman. So the mere fact that he talked about Adam and Eve does not help either of us. Okay? And then look, she writes, Also, Martin Luther holds this view of the words referring to husband and wife in his commentary. Martin Luther. Who cares? Who cares what Martin Luther thinks? He had his opinion. It's about as good as your opinion, just just writing that like that. If you had told me maybe why he said that and gave you his give me his evidence of why he believes that, then that might be interesting, maybe. If he has an argument based on biblical data that we can use to prove his case, that's interesting. The mere fact that he has that opinion is completely useless. It has no bearing on this conversation whatsoever. I care as much about his opinion as I do about yours or my next door neighbor who's not even a Christian. It doesn't matter. Opinions, everybody has an opinion. Now, if you had brought in, like I say, if you had brought in, what did Martin Luther use as evidence for this theory that he has? That's interesting, kind of, maybe. Have you considered whether this Look, look what she said. Have you considered what this actually feels like from a woman's perspective? What if the roles were reversed? What would it feel like if you couldn't share your passion of sharing, teaching the Bible because you were a man? Because people emphasize certain scriptures over others. Paul did indeed endorse women in ministry. He praises multiple women in Romans 16. So, again, she's talking about her feelings. And, and and what I said is that, look, I don't even care. I have no, like, I don't care anything about the feelings here. That's simply not, has no bearing on this whatsoever. The feelings here, that's not relevant. Your feelings about what the Bible says are completely irrelevant. Okay? We read the Bible for what it says. And whatever it says is true, okay? Your feelings about what that truth is is completely irrelevant. If the Bible, if what Paul is saying is women shouldn't teach, then that's what it says, so women shouldn't teach. That's the reality. If Paul says something else, well, prove it, okay? But you haven't done that. You're talking about your feelings. And again, the fact that Paul praises women in, in Romans 16 for their work in the ministry. There's, there's many kinds of ministries other than preaching and teaching, okay? Like he says, Phoebe was a succorer of many. Like that means, that means she helped them. Probably she was probably just like letting them stay at, at her house or whatever. Who knows? Or, they, or she gave them money or she gave them food or whatever. We don't know what she did. But it doesn't say anything about her teaching anybody or anything. She's a succorer of many, Phoebe. So why did you say Phoebe 
Paul Paul promoted women teaching. He Phoebe and Aquila. What? Phoebe and Priscilla, you said, right? Just an ignorant man. Disgusting. So now I barely know how to read the Bible because they use a strong support. Yeah, you do barely know how to read the Bible. Your reading of the Bible is ridiculous, man. You think the fact that you can read the words on the page means you know how to interpret the Bible. That's what you think, I guess. I mean, that's the best scenario for what you think, I guess. That's how ignorant you are, okay? The Bible, that's not about the, how you interpret the Bible, okay? First of all, the Bible is written thousands of years ago, first thing. And secondly, it's written to other people back then, right? And then we're now in, in our time trying to interpret it. So what we do when we, we, like the classic way of interpreting the Bible is to try to figure out what Paul's saying to his audience and then extrapolate that. What would that mean for us today? If that's what he's saying to his audience, what would that mean for us today? That's, that's the classic kind of way to interpret the Bible nowadays. Okay. And I guess you tried to do that in some regard, to some extent, by trying to say that it's about wives and husbands. And so therefore, and then you kind of reasoned about what that is to us. But the fact that you try to make that about wives and husbands, purely based on your ideology and your stupid use of strong, that you don't know how, to, you don't even know what strongs is, what it's for. It's not for that, okay, what you just did there to retranslate the Bible. That's not what Strong's Concordance is for, okay? You ignorant woman. And again, I'm not saying you're, you're an ignorant woman like, oh, women are ignorant. I'm saying you are an ignorant woman. You, you, you make feminism look bad by the way you acted here today. Not that feminism needs your help to look bad, but even though I'm so co convinced feminism is bad and that, <clears throat> and that feminism is wrong, you made it look worse today because of the way you acted or whatever, whenever you made this video. And then the fact that you just erased my comment, like the coward that you are. You're, that's the other thing about you. You're like a coward. And I'm, I'm not because you're a woman. Because the men that do this are cowards too, like destroying the works of the devil, true speller, and, uh, and other cowards that like to talk on their videos but can't take the heat in the comments. Because you're cowardly, weak, you're not, a, you're not even intellectually honest enough to, uh, to uh, accept criticism, okay? What does the Bible say about, uh, about people who won't accept rebuke? Do you know what it says about them? Did you read that part? You ignorant woman. In Christ Jesus is a future spiritual reality as well as... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, men and women are different, but our brain capacity is the same. Yeah, I, I pointed out that that's a foolish, ridiculous lie, too. Teaching the gospel is pretty much what we were doing. So, yeah, because I was telling her how we don't teach the gospel, we proclaim it, right? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna post this reply I put again, <clears throat> just to show that she's just wrong in every way. I edited this after I posted. I edited. There's something about it I didn't like. I forget now though. Oh, yeah. So you can read my my um, comments if you want to just pause the video and, and read what I said, but I I mostly talked about what I said here in this video right so it's probably not gonna help you that much but it might i don't know i can't even remember this all but whatever but anyway so i'm gonna post it now and it's gonna disappear because she's a coward and again 
I don't care. It's not about women being cowards. I know women. I know women that are brave, very brave. But you personally are a coward, okay? And I and I'm calling you an ignorant woman because you seem very proud to be a woman, and you seem very certain that women should be allowed to do all these things, such as teach the Bible. But you're basing all that on your own ignorance. Okay, so I'm calling you an ignorant woman. Mostly just because I know that's probably going to get under your skin because you're feminist retardery. Okay, but anyway. This was absolutely horrendous. This is shameful. You should be ashamed of yourself, but you're shameless. That's why you just erased the comment. That's what people, that's what the shameless people like you do. Instead of, instead of accepting the rebuke and learning something and improving and becoming a better person, you erase the comment and then you continue doing the same thing you were doing because you, you're shameless, because you're wicked. All right. Now I'm not saying you're, you're a devil that, that you're going to hell or anything like that. I understand you're saved that you're my sister and all that stuff. Okay. I'm telling you you're wicked because you're doing wicked things on this channel, like what you did here in this video. And so if you want to stop being wicked in that way and start, start being a good disciple of Christ, I would start with taking down this video. And then I would think very seriously about taking down your whole channel and going and studying the Bible for a few years before you ever teach anybody anything about it ever again. That's my advice. What you're probably going to do is ignore me and just continue doing what you're doing. Because as I said, you're just a shameless, like you're just a shameless person. And you're just, you're, you're just based on like your own pride and, and your own conceited arrogance that you think you're some Bible teacher, but you're not, man. You're not. Like I say, man, you learned the gospel, you believe it, okay, you want to preach it, go preach it. Go tell everybody the gospel. Tell more people, tell everyone. But if you want to teach the Bible, like, you don't know, man. You don't know anything about it, okay? And you should study, as Paul tells Timothy in that letter, study before you start teaching the Bible, okay? Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's not what you're doing. You need to be ashamed. Anyway. I don't know. For my viewers, I hope that helped you guys to learn something about the Bible. I did bring in some Bible scriptures, so I know that those will help you. I don't know if my rhetoric and commentary was that helpful. I was kind of losing my cool and being angry. So that's not the best. I apologize for that. And Lily's in the field. I apologize if I was, if I said anything inappropriate, but I, but, and like my anger, maybe that's not inappropriate too, but I kind of, I, I'm pretty sure I stand by everything I said here. I don't think I said anything in anger that was that, that was literally wrong. But I do regret if I hurt your feelings or anything, but sometimes that can even get people to do the right thing too. So I don't regret rebuking you and reproving you, okay? Because you're quite wrong and you shouldn't teach the Bible, okay? So I'll say a prayer for you and I hope you'll act wisely. And uh, to my viewers, thanks for watching. Toronto Bible Study. Hallelujah.